Hello there. It is my very great privilege at this time to be able to present to you in a very few moments one of the outstanding motion pictures of this decade. A saga of such searing passion that it explodes from the screen like a slice of cake. This is the story they said was too uninteresting to be made. A stirring tale of heroism, of courage, and of selfless devotion in the service of the frozen vegetable trade. In this movie, you can see, you can see the, the, the primitive rich, ritual of the weekly board meeting. You will thrill to the amazing language of the marketing man. You will watch with wonder the strange, unearthly mating ritual of the assistant head of motivational research. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time it gives me much pride and it is with a great deal of sincerity and honor that I now present the Norman Sinjin Stevens and Peggy Mount in Billy Bremner's extraordinary motion picture, The Great Bird's Eye P Relaunch of 1971. <laughs> of February 1893, the coastline of Scotland was whipped and savaged in one of the worst storms that the hardy, rugged folk of those times had ever witnessed. The merciless sea and wind lashed the shore in its tiny dwellings for nine unending deeds. However, our story takes place in Surrey in 1970, which is a bit of a relief as it's much quieter there. In the early months of 1970, in an obscure building in a rather unfashionable part of suburban Surrey, a small group of men met together to plan an operation which, if successful, would change the entire face of the edible pea market as we know it today. These desperate men dedicated frozen pea other than their own, the notorious and strangely named Bird's Eye frozen peas, now gathered together at the Bird's Eye Chief's bidding to plan the utter annihilation of all their erstwhile competitors. The atmosphere was tense and expected. Bearing in mind always that other factors be material to the continual thriving of this great organization. And I emphasize this, and I, I, I cannot stress this too strong. The changes, small changes perhaps, major changes, probably. But, Mr. Chairman, I would suggest great changes that we shall see in the forthcoming year. The responsibility for which and in the... Shut up! You're a great teacher. <laughs> Gentlemen, we come to the next item on the agenda, the sales target for bird's IP sales in 1971. I think we've all read the relevant information to help guide us in making this difficult decision. So I now suggest that we fix the sales target in the customary way by drawing it out of a hat. Five percent. The sales target for 1971 is a five percent increase over 1970. Oh, yeah. oh. That simply means we have to hold our market share while the market itself increases. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Play Bristol Rovers. Ah, yeah. Uh, can we collect our fees now? This is a bird's eye salesman who hasn't yet heard that he has to sell even more in 1971. Gentlemen, you've done a good morning's work. Time for lunch, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. Good. 
God, who are you? I am the comparatively good fairy. The comparatively good fairy? Well, nobody's perfect. Boom, boom, boom. One in a row. And I look after all bird's eye salesmen everywhere and make sure their sales targets are not too high. Well, it's not too high. If you don't improve your product and presentation, it is. It's not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. It bleeding well is. Now, shut your gob unless you'd like to be turned into a frog. Oh. Don't threaten me, young man. You're barging here, pretending to be a fairy. Turning us out of market, please. Well, you don't scare me, you fraud. You couldn't turn someone into a frog to save your life. <laughs> oh, bucket. Now then, watch it. Yes, comparatively good fairy, but we want to know why our target is too high unless we improve our product and presentation. And so you shall. Good evening and welcome to another edition of the Why Our Target Is Too High Unless We Improve Our Product and Presentation Show. <laughs> Wife of the Oxford Professor of Logic and Metaphysics. Good evening. Mrs. Anthony Barber, wife of the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Good evening. And Mrs. Kent Walton, wife of the Professor of Marketing Studies at the London School of Economics. Good evening. None of these ladies are such experts as their husbands, but they make much better television. Is our target too high? Mrs. Eyre. Well, of course, first we must see how the frozen pea market has constantly grown, year by year. Here you can see how the total market is split between frozen and all other types of presentation. Canned, dried, fresh, surprise, and so on. You can see how each year the frozen sector steadily erodes the rest. Today, frozen peas account for almost half the total pea sales in this country. An excellent growth pattern. Mrs. Barber? And if you look at the consumer research, you'll find that half the pea buyers in the country buy at least one packet of peas a fortnight. Another third buy once a month. And when you realize that that level of purchasing is more than double the same figure that applied five years ago, you'll also really realize why our bird's eye salesmen have been so successful. But what tremendous growth potential exists here, too. And in the next five years, those people currently buying a packet of peas a fortnight, might be buying once a week. Furthermore, latest research shows seven out of ten housewives who buy frozen peas buy birds So, as the market grows, and as our share of the market grows, so, of course, has our total pea business grown. Ah, yes. But in that case, why does the comparatively good fairy say that our sales target was too high? Mrs. Kent Walton. She doesn't say it's necessarily too high. What she does say is that when you are as successful as bird's eye, and when you already hold a 70% market share, and when housewives see you as being the best brand on the market, well, it's very difficult to increase sales dramatically with an unchanged product. In other words, it's much easier to improve on a mediocre market performance than on an excellent one. And bird's eye's performance has been excellent. So, how can bird's eye increase their sales in 1971? By actually improving the product and its promotion still further. As indeed the comparatively good fairy suggested earlier. Exactly. I see. Thank you so much. Improve the product? Improve a bird's eye frozen pea? Yes. Improve it. Yet how? For it is as perfect as e'er this goodly earth produced. From seeds, develop it with loving care. Wrung from the midnight brows of agronomic experts at bird's eye. Grown by most gentle pea men. In lands well chosen and well known to suit the cultivation of young pea. Till harvested in the ripened fullness of its time, 
perfect and tender. Straight weight is clapped in icy bonds, refrigerated there and carried thence. Behold, the miracle is moved. Arguing thus, how can you say to me, it may be improved? Ah, sorry, that's all you're getting. Bloody fairies. That'll learn ya. Oh, blimey. Improve our pee? But how? 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 Ask a marketing man. Good idea, Lord Pewty. Mm. Miss Gibbon! Will you send in a marketing man and an interpreter, please? <laughs> He predicates a euphoric anti-meridian. Oh, a uh, reciprocal extrapolation of matutinal benignity. It says good morning too. Will you please ask it how we can improve the bird's IP? Yes. Please adumbrate the methodology of product amelioration. Oh, <laughs> postulating a strategy of substantive and non-image USB reformation, assuming constant ABP. Extrinsic to a maximization of point of sale realization, increase media activity or in style promotional usage, instigate an in depth motivational analysis on the full HOE spectrum with correlated empiric limited placement merchandising. It says, Ask some housewives. Boom, boom. Why, Joe, that's a good idea. That's what we'll do then. Right, good, marvelous. When your whole business depends upon pleasing the housewife, and convincing her of your quality. And when your continued growth depends upon pleasing her and convincing her even more, then you ask her what she wants. And this is what Bird's Eye did. In March, they set up a major national inquiry to establish attitudes towards frozen peas. They asked housewives from all over the country of different social groups of different income groups, of different ages, of different family circumstances, and so on, and so on, and so on. And it asked each housewife why she liked pain. And do you like that pea? No, no. Couldn't tell it from butter. No, couldn't tell that pea from a dead crab. I couldn't tell that pea from a trip to Hamburg. I couldn't tell that pea from a dollar Oh, that tasted nice. Oh, must have been bird's eye. Delicious. I like all my peas on the plate to be the same size. Why? Sheer stupidity. I like them the same size because they then create a sense of cosmic harmony. Because they don't frighten me so much. So far, we've found that housewives like their peas graded in size. But what quality do they look for most in their peas? Do they want peas smaller? No, no, definitely no. No, no. Why not? Nothing to them. Wind and water. All right, then. Would you like peas sweeter? No, we don't want sugar pudding, no. What about greener peas, then? No, don't want colouring like that in tin peas. <coughs> All that dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane and deoxyribose nucleic acid and monosodium glutamate, that's bloody rubbish. All right, then. How do you like your vegetables and peas? Younger. 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 In an hammock, standing up. Younger. Younger. We began to detect one message coming through all these interviews. Housewives wanted their peas. Younger. Shut up. Younger. <laughs> yes, folks, younger. If peas were younger, they were sweeter, 
more tender, greener, fresher. The message was, if we picked our peas younger, we'd get the finest that nature could offer. Ah. Well? He requires a response to his interrogative stimulus concerning the experimentation. Oh, empiricism among the relative purchasing community provides evidence for a greater degree of maturation in the product at point of sale. They want younger peas. Boom. Boom. Younger peas? Younger peas, eh? But how? How? Ask an agronomist. <laughs> My Joe, that's a good idea. Well, that's what we'll do then. Can we produce even younger peas? There is no reason why we cannot produce a younger pea. Let me explain. We measure the age and tenderness of a given P, X, with this machine, Y, which we scientists call a tenderometer, Q. It measures the crushability, C, and tenderness, E, of the P, X. Now, N. On this uh, chart, L, the more M tender E, the P, X, is, the lower the tenderometer reading, B. Thus, a very a young P, a small x, will have a tenderometer Q reading R of less than 100. R. And normally N, we doubly scientists S, R A A R M. Stop talking like that. Sorry. Normally, bird's eye harvest their peas at a tenderometer reading of 107. A tenderometer reading of over 110 means that the peas are getting too old. A tenderometer reading of over 120 uh, means a conservative majority of over 60. <laughs> Don't be silly. Not easy making this kind of information interesting, you know. Shut up. Sorry. Well, if you want a younger pea, I recommend harvesting at a tenderometer reading of 103. Let it be done. Yay, oh master. For thy very word is our command. Yet... Hearken unto me, Master. Hearken even unto the words I shall tell thee. For thou shalt need the right seed, that thou mayst harvest it at the right moment. Stop talking like that. Sorry. You'll need our special seed in the exact moment to pick it younger. It's only trying to make it more interesting. And so the bird's eye boffins set to work to develop the seed for a pea that could be harvested sooner than any pea had been harvested before. All through the summer of 69, research was carried out at special bird's eye laboratories, uh, here, here, and here. And finally, the perfect pea was produced here and rushed south to the special bird's eye test growing area. Yeah. Told them it wasn't big enough.